The quest for the perfect light switch has led me to the Sonoff T1. There are a lot of things to like about the T1, but one big knock against it is the style. Let me show you what I've done to make the T1 more wife approvable. And as a bonus, I'll show you how to add a temperature and humidity sensor so you can easily get temperature readings from all over your house. Ready, set, go. The Sonoff T1 is a great smart switch. I really like the three button version. It gets called three gang a lot, but I don't think that's the proper term. At least according to the wise wizards of electricalness that taught me, gang refers to the width of one switch or receptacle. So this is a single gang, this is a two gang, and this is a three gang. So technically, the T1 is a single gang switch, but it has three buttons and three relays. If I worked for Sonoff, I'd probably have called it the T3. But since I don't work for Sonoff, I can call it whatever I want. I hereby declare this the Tri-Switch. So what's so great about the Tri-Switch? Well, for one, it can replace three switches. For $20, that's a great price. And since it fits all three switches in a single gang, it frees up a lot of space in your switch box. I'm also a big fan of the capacitive touch buttons. But like most of you, I'm not a big fan of this blocky glass cover or of this weird kind of snap-in adapter that's supposed to connect it to your switch box. Well, here's my solution. In a two or three gang switch box, you can turn the T1 sideways and glue it to a blank faceplate. The faceplate is thin enough that it still allows for activation of the switches. So it works, it looks good, and it's cheap. That's a win, win, win. I expect that there will be some folks that will be pretty skeptical of using hot glue to secure a light switch. Hot glue, if you use enough of it, forms a pretty strong bond. Your switch shouldn't ever get hot, but even if it does, hot glue won't melt until it gets to about 120 degrees Celsius. If you want something stronger, you could try something like liquid nails or epoxy glue. It isn't like we don't trust different kinds of glue in some pretty important situations. So don't be too quick to dismiss the idea of using glue. At the end of the day, there are no moving parts in this switch. So once you have it sealed in there, it should never move or come loose unless you have an earthquake, but then you probably got bigger problems. Additionally, to keep the mains voltage separated from everything else in the switch box, I've left this plastic housing on the switch. To get it to fit best, I had to chop off the ends, but that's it. Get a blank faceplate, cut the ends off the tri-switch housing, and glue it to the faceplate. Getting the circuits connected to the tri-switch is pretty easy. One line in, one neutral in, and three switch legs out. Here's a little wiring diagram to show how mine is connected now. Each of the relays on the tri-switch is rated for two amps. That might seem low, but it's enough to run a ceiling fan, most of which never exceed one amp. And as long as you're using LED bulbs, most of which are about six watts, you can connect 20 of them to one of these relays and still only draw about one amp. And that's it. It looks pretty good. I know it doesn't solve the problem of fitting the T1 in a single gang switch box. I haven't quite cracked that nut yet, but I will. Now it's time for the bonus feature. As you probably know, I've been replacing the thermostats in my house with my own Smartio stats. Well, to get the best and most accurate temperature readings, I want to add a few more temperature sensors around the house. To my delight, when I tried attaching an AM2302 temperature sensor to the T1, it worked. The process is pretty simple. After flashing the T1 with Tasmoda, I soldered a header to the serial pins. Then I could connect the temperature sensor to 3 volts, ground, and GPIO3, which is the RX pin. I had a hard time finding a three gang blank switch plate, at least at my local big box hardware store. So I just cut a single gang to fit next to the double gang. It's not ideal, but it's serviceable. Either way, you need to cut a hole in the blank faceplate that's big enough for the temperature sensor to poke its little head through. I sealed it with a little caulking and done. The main point of this video is the install. If you're comfortable with the software side, including flashing Tasmoda and setting up the switches in Home Assistant, then you can just stop here. If you've got a few extra minutes, 
and you want to see me do the software setup, then stay tuned, because here it comes. The T1s that I have are the newest version, the R2. I really wish they would stop changing the process for getting them into flash mode. At least it is still possible to flash them. I'll do one the manual way, and then one over the air. My personal preference is definitely manual. For me, it's just a lot quicker and a lot more reliable. It's time to put Tasmoda on our T1. I've done this before, but since they keep changing the style of the board, I thought I'd show you how to do it again on this latest model. One of the important things about flashing the T1 when you're doing it with the USB to serial connector, not over the air, is that you don't want it connected to the relay portion of the switch. Once you get the cover off, just pull off this upper circuit board and you can set this half with the relays in it off to the side. You won't need that for now. This is the only part you need for flashing. Now we're going to grab our USB to serial adapter. We're going to connect it with the square pin as our three volt pin. So it's connected to the FTDI adapter. You can see oh, the pins are labeled pretty clearly. According to the latest Tasmoda Wiki, all you have to do to get this new R2 version into programming mode is to press this S1 button twice. You just have to do it pretty quickly, it looks like. So I powered up my FTDI board, had it already plugged into the Sonoff switch, pressed the S1, the little onboard button, twice, and then hit flash. I, I did that same method several other times, and it didn't work. So... It doesn't seem to be an exact science. But the good news is I have two of these switches, so we'll do the other one over the air in just a minute. But this definitely looks like it's working, so that makes me mucho happy. Flash complete. Hallelujah. And bingo. It is working. Workity work working. Once your tri-switch is flashed, you can use the backlog command to load all the settings that you need into Tasmoda. If you use the USB to serial method and you still have your adapter connected to your computer, you can use Termite to load the backlog command. Or once the tri switch is flashed and connected to your network, you can open up the console and copy and paste the backlog command in there. Either way works. Okay, here's another T1 R2. We're going to try and flash this one over the air with Sonata. Okay, I've got an extension cord plugged into it, and I've got it plugged into the wall, so be careful you don't shock yourself. One important part here is you have to do this on a computer that is connected to your network via Wi-Fi. It doesn't help to be connected with an Ethernet cable. It has to be Wi-Fi connected. Okay, we run Sonata. It says, which IP address are you using? I know that 28 is the wired connection on this computer so the one I'm gonna use is this 51 so I just select this number here two now I need to put in my Wi-Fi SSID and password don't look so I don't know that it's gonna be broadcasting the IT network yet that's what I want see how that's blinking rapidly there it is got it Now we can connect to that. The security key is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Okay, so what it did was connect to IT and then give it my SSID and password. So now it can connect to Aiden on its own. Now, while we're connected to Aiden, our own network, it's going to download sonoff.bin or whatever version of Tasmoda and upload it. And there it goes. Now it's working. After the first download is complete, with a minute or so, you should connect to the final stage to see if there's final stage. Holy crap! Look at that. All right, we're going to connect to final stage. And final stage will disappear when it's been fully flashed and the image Arduino bin has been installed. If there is no send file log entry, ensure all firewalls have been... Oh, crap. I don't think I turned off my firewalls. Dang it.
There it is. Okay, so I had to put in 192.168.4.1. Funny that I still have to put in my SSID and password, but whatever. That was a total so now I can get a web browser again. This time I'm going to go to 56. And there we go. This is the one we have. Now, it looks to me like this is an old version of Tasmode. I don't know how old, but it looks old. Uh, okay. So the process for upgrading this is going to be to go to the Tasmode website. Go to releases. Grab minimal. And then I'm also going to grab the latest full version, which I already have, but I'm going to put it on the desktop just to make it easy. Now, firmware upgrade. First thing I need to do is upload a file from the desktop, and it has to be the minimal. There it is. So enough, minimal. Open, start upgrade. Give it a few minutes. Now it says successful. We go to the main menu. There we go. This is minimal. You cannot stop yet. You must still upload the full version. There it is. Now it's sewn off dot bin to start upgrade. Upload successful. The device will restart in a few seconds. We can always just force the issue. Not that it'll help. It's gonna restart when it's dang well ready. Doesn't really matter what I want to do. And there we go. Now we are on version 6.2.1. Latest and greatest. Okay. Now we gotta now we gotta do the whole thing. See how painful this is? Ugh. This one is done. Come on now. Oh, that's interesting. Whoa. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Why is this still this way? Oh, that's... The topic is messed up. All right, I think I found the problem here. Button topic is set to sewn off. So we probably should do this. Now the button topic is going to be set to main bathroom. So now when we click this, it'll work. I'll give you backlog command with everything you need, but this uh, button topic one is a new one that they just surprised me with. But now they won't surprise you. You're welcome. That was a total pain in the butt, and I would way rather just do it manually with the FTDI adapter took me half as long even with all the struggles of getting it into programming mode it was way faster don't be scared of this little guy this is your friend it's gonna save you a lot of time just get one learn how to use it in my humble opinion it's it beats flashing over the air anytime right now I'm using Tasmoda version 6.2.1 you should totally expect that future versions may change some or all of these steps and settings that's just the nature of the open source business your best reference for all things Tasmoda is the wiki on their GitHub page. If you're having problems, make sure you read the available information before posting a new issue or asking for help. I don't want to discourage anyone from asking for help. There are a lot of good people willing to give their time to help you when you get stuck. Just make sure you've done your homework in the documents first. It'll save everyone a lot of time and trouble. I'm going to assume that everyone watching this is supremely intelligent and is already using Home Assistant. If, however, you're supremely intelligent but aren't using Home Assistant yet, here's a link to how to get started. To get the tri-switch working in Home Assistant, you need three switch entries in your switch section of your configuration.yaml file, and the temperature and humidity sensor entries go under your sensors heading, like this. Remember, the middle section of all of your topics needs to match whatever you have in the topic box in Tasmoda. 
right here. There's one more thing to show you before we're done. I want these switches and the temperature to show up in my Home Assistant user interface, aka Lovelace. So first, I'm going to go to the Customize menu in Home Assistant and change the icons. I can change the name here too if I want to. Now in the ui-lovelace.yaml file, I need to add an entry for each switch and then a state image entry for the fan so that I can make it move when it's on and then a state label for the temperature. And that's it. We're done. That's how I'm using the try switch to get maximum WAF. Even if you don't use the T1 the way I have, I hope there was something useful here that'll help you in your quest for the most perfectly smartest light switch. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.